To mark the 100-year anniversary of the establishment of the Turkish Republic, Ankara has set itself an ambitious list of technology goals for 2023. Already at the forefront of gaming and drone technology, Ankara is determined to propel its homegrown tech industry even higher up on the global innovation ladder. Its vision for 2023 includes everything from the creation of zero-waste cities and plans to join the global space race. But success is often met with scrutiny. So while Turkish tech startups like the messaging app BIP have enjoyed global popularity, the country's communications and cybersecurity laws have put it at odds with industry players like Facebook, Google and Twitter. So what will it take to achieve Turkey's 2023 technology goals and at what cost? And to answer that, I'm now joined from Ankara by Ali Taha Koç. He is the president of Digital Transformation Office of Turkey. Ali, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. Could you walk us through the process which the Digital Transformation Office had undergone since its foundation and what exactly does your office do? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, actually, our main goal is to narrow down the gap between the technological developments and the public policies. Mm -hmm. So Turkey, Turkey adapts a holistic digital transformation in terms of human capital, processes and technology. Mm -hmm. This transformation uh, can be accessed in seven main dimensions, actually. I just want to elaborate about a little bit more about the seven dimensions. The first one is access. The second one is use, innovation, jobs society, trust, and the final one is the market openness. The first policy dimension is access. I just want to talk about it a little bit more, but the International Telecommunication Union and the number of internet users has reached, according to the International Telecommunication Union, the number of internet users has reached 4.9 billion around the world. So it means that the two-thirds of the world is online, yet the rest remains offline. So as more people go online, the need for infrastructure increases as well. In Turkey, we are investing solely and hardly on broadband communication infra infrastructure. We are try trying to increase the number of fiber connections going through the homes. Mm -hmm. Turkey is above the OECD average in fiber subscriber growth rate among the all OECD countries. Digital transformation, what we know about it is that it can only be achieved when there is high quality access to communication networks. I would like to also draw your attention one more thing about the digital government gateway of Turkey. It is the fast and secure access to our government services. Uh, uh, everyone all over the Turkey can access 24-7 to this gateway. This year we passed the 3 billion access numbers to this gateway. Let me rephrase this number. Every minute in Turkey, mm -hmm. six, more than 6,000 people log into digital government gateway and getting their all government services. The second policy dimension is so important as, as well as the use, use of the digital technologies and data, from education to health, from transportation to work life. Everything is digital due to COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. A great example of effective use of data is our digital government portal as well. The platform offered only 22 services when it was established in 2008. Today, we offer more than 6,000 services. And the number of people that is using our system is exceeded 57 million. Yes. This is one of the big systems. So are you saying that the COVID-19 pandemic impacted Turkey's digital transformation in a, po a positive way? And if so, what kind of changes uh, it has gone through during this process? Sure, sure, definitely. What happened is, actually, most of the people uh, try to get familiar with the digital technologies. And they have to. So previously, the digitalization is some kind of a, a add-on value. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it, it's, it's, it becomes a, something that everybody has to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason that the number increases drastically. And of, of, of course, what we're happening from the students to public employees to disabled, everybody is starting to use the digital services. For example, let me give you an example. 90% of our population uses the, this platform. And from the elderly to young people to students. And guess what? If you are above 65 years old and if you don't never ever use a digital technology, we come to your houses. We have a yes. project which we say that we come to you and explain the digital technologies. So the COVID-19 helps us from 
young to old old ages, everybody is trying to use more and more and digital yeah. technology. So, Ali, why are you encouraging the use of local and national products? Are they safer than the, for example, other messaging apps? And if so, why? Sure, definitely. What happened is, you know, in the last time that we talk, what we talk about is this uh, alternatives, right? So in our last talk, we just say that uh, our efforts to def uh, develop alternatives with Turkish tech companies and emphasis the uh, uh, alternatives in ter terms of social media apps and search engines. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe you remember that a couple of months ago, there's a huge crash on a global social media app. Yes. And millions prefer the local national product. And guess what? The, the platform doubled the number of its active users overnight, doubled the number of users. So half of these new users also, luckily, and which we are so happy about it, is from abroad. We, learn, we have learned through experiences that we should not solely rely on a global international brands. Mm -hmm. We should definitely build our own brands. And Turkey is also a country where actually nowadays we are having our unicorns and decacorns, yes. which is $1 billion and 10 billion companies in ICT sector. Look at, the, for example, in 2020, we have the Pit Games, the first unicorn of Turkey, a game uh, uh, software development company. And then after that, we have Getif, was valued around $7.5 billion and game developer Dream Games exceeded $1 billion uh, valuation. Yes. It, Lately, we have the Decacorn uh, Trendyol, which is the e-commerce Trendyol, become the first Decacorn, which with a valuation of 16.5 billion. So in Turkey, uh, we have a motto: Turkey, Turkey's data stays in Turkey. So what we are trying to say is, we will generate value, even more value, out of this data, which is located in Turkey. So if we keep our data in Turkey, how are you planning to uh, fight with the uh, fake news and uh, misinformation? Do you believe there is a need for uh, uh, regulation for social media? Of course, there, is, there needs to be. But uh, at the beginning of the day, everything uh, nails down to human. Uh, the, because the weakest link is the awareness. So first of all, you need to definitely regulate it. But uh, in cybersecurity or misinformation, it boils, boils down the, the people. So when you are uh, listening or when you are reading a news, mm -hmm. first of all, you need to question, is it, maybe it can be cor not correct or wrong. So that's the reason that you need to start the, doing your homework at the beginning. Then after that, the regulation is going to follow up and then help you out. But the, the weakest link is the human factor. So mm -hmm. even if you have the strong regulations, so if you don't make the speakers thing stronger, uh, you're not going to be a totally a holistic approach. You, you cannot totally satisfy the needs of this big uh, event. So yes. that's the reason that they are saying that we need to educate one by one from the high school, from the primary school, to educate the people that whatever you are reading or listening or uh, watching cannot be real. So you need to question it. And the trust issue is the biggest issue in the digital platforms right now. So building up the trust is a big question. And everybody's trying to say that, they, please trust me. But how? How? Why? And I, that brings up this question. How can countries or Turkey strike a balance between security and the need for privacy at this point? So what happened is, you know, actually there's a... a clean cut between that. So the security is so important. If it is a nationally uh, important project or a, a data, mm -hmm. you need to think about it, the security aspects first. But if it is a common uh, information or a common knowledge for everybody can uh, uh, access, then you need to uh, talk about the privacy. So there's a clean cut between those two issues. But in Turkey, what we are doing is we are just asking the people to not to listen only one platform. Okay. So even if you have the national products, please use the other pro products as well and compare. For example, I am going to ask you, for example, when you, everybody, all of our listeners who are going to home, instead of using one search engine, why don't you go and try to try, uh, search their names mm -hmm. with, with using different search engines and then check the results. Maybe they're going to understand the difference much better than instead of I'm saying the, the trust this one or the other one. They need to do their own small tests with the with respect to different these apps okay. or mm -hmm. channels. So tell us about this uh, 2023 vision of yours. What will it take to achieve this vision, and what are the main challenges? The main challenges is actually the digitization is going to come in full force. So the labor market is going to be transformed. 
So right now, we need, what we are working as a digital transformation office to change the, transform the labor market because everybody needs to come up with their new skills. For example, artificial intelligence skills, coding skills. So lately, everybody's saying that everybody needs to know another language, right? So yes. right now, we are saying that everybody needs to know a coding language. Everybody needs to know at least a little bit about the artificial intelligence. So that's our biggest challenge for the 2023 20, is to having the, from all the public sectors are having this transformation with the new technologies. So everybody needs to be aware of the, what the AI is does, doing because in the next five years, all of the applications, digital applications that we use is gonna have inside AI, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. So if you wanna use something, at least you need to know, uh, get uh, familiar with it. So that's the reason that we are just gonna have a, a lot of research and the technical pro, pro, uh, pro projects to help the, our people to get familiar with the artificial yes. intelligence following years. So I guess first you have to ratchet up awareness among the public, Ali. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.